as the partial government shutdown enters day 24, President Trump is touting his other accomplishments. This should have been done by others. If you look at the embassy moving to Jerusalem, every president promised that. They never did it. I did it. We're doing well with China. We're doing well with North Korea. This was one of the problems. It's our southern border. It's really very sad and very, very dangerous. So are the president's accomplishments being lost in the shutdown shuffle? Here now to debate that is GOP strategist Ford O'Connell and Iona College professor Dr. Jeannie Zeno. Thank you both for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, Ford, I'll here. start with you. I mean, look, the shutdown is affecting, the partial shutdown is affecting a lot of people. There are uh, people who aren't getting paychecks right now. So on one hand, I think it's fair that a lot of the attention is on this right now. Well, look, I think that it's fair that there's a lot of attention on this, but you have to remember from a booming economy to improved trade talks to China to getting our vets better care, there's been a lot of positive developments for President Trump in America. And despite the, the stalemate shutdown and Democrats' attempts to block Trump at every turn, he's continuing to deliver on many of his campaign promises. Jeannie, what do you think about that? You know, I think that the president should take the advice Lindsey Graham gave him on Fox News this weekend. Open the government, Mr. President, and then continue to debate the best way to secure the border. It's really not that tough to do. And the idea that Democrats are distracting, the president himself has used this as a way to gin up a controversy, open the government, and then debate border security. That's what the Democrats have been saying. That's what his own Republican colleagues in the Senate, including his close ally, Lindsey Graham, have said over the weekend. Do that, and then you can talk about these other things you want to talk G about. But when 800 thousand people are suffering without paychecks. Very, very tough to break through that and talk about your accomplishments when G people are G breaking into their 529s and their kids' college education G in order to pay for basic needs like rent and food. G G the White House doesn't want to see the 800,000 government workers suffer, but we also Hallelujah. know that they're, event they're eventually going to get back pay. But to say that the crisis on the southern border is not there is not true. Look, you've got an 800,000 case backlog of immigration courts. You have overflow in, in our jails and our detention centers. You've got a record number of migrant families coming across the border illegally. It's a little disingenuous to say it isn't, that it's manufactured. Also, you know, look, the southern border is a real problem, and we do in physical barriers do work. What Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer won't tell you is that we currently have 650 miles of physical barriers on the southern border, and all the president is asking for is a few hundred more miles. How ridiculous is that? Well, and, uh, can oh, I just if, say if I can, Hold on. Can I interject for a second here, guys? Because I just want to respond to something that Ford just said. You know, I understand the argument of people will receive their pay at some point, but I also understand a lot of people don't have extra money lying around. A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, and so right now, those people are struggling. So the question is, how do we get this negotiation done? How do we get everybody on the same page sooner? And Jeannie, as we go to you, I mean, you do look at some jobs numbers here, and there were 312,000 jobs added in December. So there is something to be touted about these accomplishments, but there's a lot going on right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to take exception to what Ford just said. I never said the crisis was manufactured. What I said was open the government, Mr. President, put 800,000 people back to work, allow them to pay for their food, their rent, their kids, and then debate border security. Border security is critical. But, the, gov the Democrats have been funding it for a very, that, very long but, time, and they should continue to. But so I that, never claimed there wasn't a crisis. What I said was open the government, don't hold these people hostage to a political debate about the best way to but secure isn't that, Hold on, excuse me. But isn't that what a negotiation is? I mean, the president's not just going to open the government without getting something that he's asking for, correct, Ford? That's absolutely correct, Jillian. And also, Gene and I are both old enough to remember 1986, Ford, where basically yourself, we gave please. amnesty <laughs> and then border security never came. And then in 2006, you passed the Secure Fence Act. Democrats took over Congress, then basically gerrymandered that law such that, no, that money couldn't be authorized. We've seen this play over and over. Every time the Republicans give in to what the Democrats want, we never wind up with border security. And that's why we are where we are. Well, we are out of time. We appreciate you both being here, Jeannie and Ford. And Look, I mean, nobody wants to see people out of a paycheck right now. Nobody wants to see a partial government shutdown. But the president did run and win the presidency on border security. So there is a lot to be said for that. And we will certainly be watching this and see what happens. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thank you.